Hey, here I am. Uh, beginning of summer is still three weeks away, but they've already cut this hay field about two days ago. This is one of my very favorite fields on Lopez Island. It's a little bit windy, so I'm hanging on to my easel at the moment. And there is a view of the Olympic Mountains here, and they're covered by cloud right now, but I know where they are, and I'll probably play that up a little later as a nice color contrast. So I have uh, done a, a quick little charcoal sketch. I'm going to play that up a bit so you can see it here. This is my my basic uh, center of interest hay bale. It's kind of a raggedy, hairy looking thing, which I I like. I like that shadow that moves up out of there. And then, of course, where the bale joins the field is where the real action is. So it's, it's all this grassy motion here that I'm going to try to get later. Now here's the very back of the field and that line under the uh, blackberry bushes and whatnot that creates a nice pattern. I want to, yeah, there we go. Now I'm making this shadow even darker in here. I have a violet pastel in my hand right now. Uh, on the ground, I'm going to let it be because it's not the same uh, dark value that it is on the hay bale. And this is what's really going to define this thing later. I want to get a feel for the distant. Uh, the Olympic Mountains are through that little gap out there. As you can see, I've started to, to make the gap with the edges of these trees. I'm gonna soften some of this up, just blending. I just use my fingers to blend, but I wanna get the color temperature of that. This might be a little bright, but no, that works. Okay, so the Olympic Mountains are the, uh, place for the eye to rest in this painting. It's going to be the color shift about like that. And this is an ultramarine blue, which is a warm blue, but then the sky above it is a cerulean blue, which has more yellow in it, um, green, I would say. So I'm going to try there. That's a pretty good little shift at this point. Okay, who can resist? I mean, there's there's a fence here. I'm just gonna, with various uh, posts that sort of do a little dance back up into here. So if I just know where that little line of delineation is, here, then the rest of these shapes and forms are going to be pretty easy to work. Okay, and then kind of working that ochre, yellow ochre tone in back here, I can see uh, just a little more. Makes little peak holes of light come through. There's a tiny bit of it in a field here, but that has more of an orange tint to it. So. It's not rocket science. I'm just going to pick up an orange stick. There it is. OK, that feels pretty good. This edge is so critical here where the field comes in and joins. OK, so I'm going to pull that into this shadow. The shadow actually started out a lot longer this morning when I first got here, and I like that effect. So I'm going to uh, play with that just a little bit. The further from the object, the less of an edge there is on any shadow. So I have to be aware of that and thinking about it the whole time I'm working here. And working with pastel is interesting because I can put pressure on the stick on part of the stroke and let the pressure off on another part. So on this one, I'm putting a a lot of pressure at the top of the stroke like that and letting that bottom part just blend into the paper and into the field. And by doing that, I'm also creating that back edge. There we go.
So I'm letting the pastel stick create this texture of the grasses in the field without a lot of elaborate detail, just by how I apply it and how much pressure I give the stick over the uh, surface of this paper. And the paper is a very textured um, paper. I think I'm using the same paper I used when I did the Port Stanley one. This is uh, Le Carte. Pastel paper made in Paris, i.e. Expensivo. But it's got a beautiful surface that accepts a lot of uh, layers of color, making it a forgiving sort of thing. Now again, I'm just putting a little pressure on the stick, being really careful when I get up to the edge of my hay bale here. I'm gonna pull some of that into the, the bale. I've got this little action going here, so this kind of gives me the excuse to draw a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna use some um, isopropyl alcohol and a brush to uh, work into some of my hay bales and my grassy area here to create even more of a textural effect. We'll just see what this does. I like it, I like it, I like it, okay. So there's an edge that really works beautifully with I'm just touching the brush here and there to get this wrap on this bale. <sighs> the other thing that the uh, alcohol does when it mixes with the pastel this is true with anything you try to mix with a pastel pigment. It'll sort of deaden the, uh, the color, which in some cases is desirable. Like I want to mute this down a bit in this, this area. So I'm going to then give it a little bit of a textural effect that mimics those distant blackberry bushes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's several ways to finish a painting. One is to have my wife back behind me with a stage hook, and she's done that. She'll pull me away from it. Or Carlina here saying, hey, we're about out of battery. So, so I think I've got a, a nice little start here, and I'll take it back to my studio and see because you only yeah, that's one shape I want to diminish that. You can only tell once you get it away from the subject and into a habitat where it's going to live, like on a gallery wall. Almost too much detail here. Okay, I'm finished. <laughs>